Hey everyone, and welcome back to Investing Guide. Starlink is incredible. How so? Well, it stops broadband internet providers from using monopolistic pricing strategies in a number of areas by giving an excellent solution for internet access in remote areas. And besides this, Starlink is going to assist in the future of the Starship, taking us to Mars and beyond. However, recent issues getting Starlink up and running are becoming a problem. Starlink raises a number of serious concerns, just like any other project. Wondering what they are? Well, let's talk about them. To begin, astronomers believe that Starlink is bound to cause a huge problem. SpaceX now has just over 800 satellites in orbit, but this, given the fact, has already made astronomers worry about the existing obstructions. SpaceX plans to launch thousands of satellites, and this is where the main concern focuses. What will happen if these plans turn to reality? The Federal Communications Commission has already given SpaceX permission to launch up to 12,000 Starlink satellites. However, the company's plans are not limited to this. SpaceX has stated that over the next few years, they intend to increase their satellite constellation to over 30,000. Even so, as they approach this figure, we may see them further increase satellite launches in order to provide a more stable internet satellite service. But even if we're only looking at the number of satellites in their initial plan, this is already a serious problem to face. In fact, NASA even released a 108-page report explaining the extent to which constellations and minor failures can cause obstruction. An average of two satellite trails per square degree per 60-second exposures this is the estimation of NASA when all the satellites of Starlink and OneWeb are operational. Let's try to make a clearer picture of this. Take a look at this visualization. As you can see, taking photographs without capturing a light trail will be hard. Not only that, but these lines all over the place, well, when you're admiring the beauty of the night sky, they're going to become something that we won't want to see. Nights where we go outside, lay down in the grass and face up in the sky, in the future, that might no longer be something so simple to do because a light trail would appear in roughly 86% of night sky shots. To fix this problem, SpaceX has been developing a darkening treatment that is expected to minimize the reflectivity of their satellites. However, NASA has determined that their satellite's effect will be fatal. Moving forward, there's the problem of space junk to remember. Satellites are incredibly complex pieces of technology, and while they appear small and simple, Actually, it's a whole lot more complicated than that, and they actually cost SpaceX up to half a million dollars each. As a result, they're far from simple, and things can easily take the wrong direction quite quickly, and they tend to do so frequently. If you imagine the problems we have with space debris and space junk already, that is just adding to it at a rate that we can't keep up. We can't keep up with the risk that creates. SpaceX has had to go through obstacles in dealing with dead satellites in the early days of Starlink. Ever since then, we've witnessed the percentage of unresponsive satellites go down. However, even if SpaceX decreases this to just 1% in the long run, 30,000 is still a huge number in terms of launching satellites. Although these are built to burn up on re-entry, it still doesn't remove the fact that there is no way to speed up this process. With SpaceX's Starlink satellites crossing altitudes of 180 to 340 miles, it will take five years to bring down and burn up satellites. And while they are in this process, these dead satellites will become space junk, which SpaceX's own operational satellite, as well as other company satellites, will have to deliberately avoid. In line with this, SpaceX states that automated collision avoidance systems are present in their satellites. But one will just have to wait and see if the said system will work on the dead satellites. Another factor that raises concern is the fact that all of SpaceX's satellites are planned to be launched into a very small altitude range of only 160 miles. As a result, this increases the chances and intensity of colliding with dead satellites. Keep in mind that each of these satellites is flying at a speed of up to 17,500 miles per hour, meaning that they have the ability to cause damage on both operating satellites and spacecraft that go near them. Now let's turn our attention to the issue facing air pollution, which is caused by the launching of this huge number of satellites. Each Falcon 9 rocket can hold approximately 60 satellites. Assuming that about 1,000 Starlink satellites have already been deployed, well, there are still 29,000 more to come. That's like 483 Falcon 9 launches to be made. When it comes to the point where Starship is ready to be used, there's a possibility of a reduction in the number of launches. But for this video, let's just assume that Falcon 9s will be used in launching all of Starlink's satellites. Given that every launch of Falcon 9 emits 336,552 kilograms of CO2, 
This means that more than 100 million kilograms of CO2 will be released to the Earth from all the launches to make Starlink a possibility. But of course, when compared to emissions from the energy and transportation industries, it's just another drop in the bucket, but it's still worth remembering. That pretty much sums up all of the big issues with Starlink, but there's one major problem. All of these low-flying satellites aren't being launched by SpaceX alone, because here comes Blue Origin entering the picture. Currently, criticisms are being thrown at Jeff Bezos for copying the plans of SpaceX. Regardless whether this is true or not, Cuba, a Blue Origin satellite internet provider, would only add new problems. Blue Origin so far has been granted permission to put 3,236 satellites into space. However, it's highly possible that this approved number will double, triple, or multiply as much as it possibly can in the long run. As a result, the number is doubled, and to make matters worse, the abilities proposed by both companies are unprecedented. In January 2020, SpaceX became the world's largest satellite operator. They only had 108 satellites in low Earth orbit at that time, and at this moment, there are currently 6,000 satellites in orbit around the Earth, and 60% of them have already died. With this information, maintaining operational tens of thousands of satellites at the same time is clearly something that hasn't been done before. As mentioned, SpaceX is actually planning to launch and operate over 10 times the number of satellites than the rest of the space industry is currently using. At this stage, can you already imagine the extent of the threat posed by a large-scale satellite internet service? However, are you also wondering as to why this has suddenly escalated into a major issue? Satellite internet is something that isn't new. Viasat is one of the companies in this line of business that has been in operation for many decades. So the question is, how come Viasat does not have tens of thousands or even hundreds of satellites? Their total launch satellites are just four, considering they've been in business since 1986. In 2004, they launched the Anik F2, their first satellite. Through the years, Viasat has launched Wild Blue 1, Viasat 1, and their latest one, Viasat 2, and for their plans in 2022, Viasat 3 is intended to be put into space. The point here is that launching a satellite is incredibly costly, and if you're depending on someone else to launch your satellites into orbit, to launch as few as possible will be your best move. So, Viasat chose a few super powerful satellites to launch, instead of over thousands of small satellites because they had to depend on NASA, and lately, SpaceX, for those launches. With that said, the cost of the upcoming Viasat 3 is estimated to be about $650 million, obviously much more complicated than Starlink and Cuba satellites. So, why can't SpaceX or Blue Origin just follow in the same footsteps? Instead of thousands of smaller satellites, why not create more powerful satellites that will lead to fewer launches? This alternative will save a lot of resources and will not further increase pollution. Obviously, this isn't ideal for watching videos in 4K or playing intense video games, but this is likely helping the space environment to avoid more pollution. Apart from the need for satellite rockets, daring to take on such a massive project like this has never been done before by any satellite internet provider because of the financial constraints. Viasat doesn't have the means to launch tens of thousands of satellites because over the last 15 years, the company hasn't been profiting. 10 years ago, this idea of Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk might have seemed insane. But look at them now. They are two of the world's wealthiest people. Both of them have, or will have, their own launch systems that will allow them to maximize the performance of their own launches. This will help in furthering their huge investments and losses year after year, because they can actually bring their systems up to speed and create revenue. Satellite internet providers haven't been a huge issue up until this point, but today, with companies like SpaceX and Blue Origin slowly initiating their plans, problems are starting to appear. Space junk isn't something that's got to be taken lightly, but with Elon Musk being environmentally conscious, do you guys think that he can pull this off and not create a big problem in space? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below, and don't forget to leave us a like and hit that subscribe button too. And while you're here, go ahead and click on one of these two videos on your screen. See you there!